Okay, we're going to go through the first set of problems out of this uh, momentum packet, and we start with number three. So we'll start with number three. So three is down here at the bottom. And it says, a ball of mass four kilograms is initially at rest on the ground. It's kicked and leaves the kicker's foot with a speed of five meters per second in a direction that's 60 degrees above the horizontal. The magnitude of the impulse imparted to the ball by the ball to the foot is most nearly by the ball to the foot. Okay, so Newton's third law. If we find the, Im the impulse imparted from the foot to the ball, then the opposite will be true. What we need is the magnitude of this. Now the direction doesn't really make I don't think the direction is going to make a difference. I think we're looking at it had zero momentum. And then it had a magnitude of this. Um, so a change in momentum, which is impulse, is your final, which is in this case, two kilogram meters per second. That's the five times 0.4. Um, minus the initial, which is zero. So it's just two. And I think that the angle in this case is not an issue. Let's see what the answer is said. We'll find out if I'm right. So they just flat out. One of the answers is is two. One of the answers is two Newton seconds. That's another um let me get down here for you. So Newton seconds is the same as a kilogram meters per second. Um and the correct answer officially is C, so I am correct. The direction there really doesn't make a bit of difference. Um, yeah, no, it, it's in it, it, it's in a straight line. It was here, and then it was here, and it's going this fast. It, yeah, we'll start to curve due to gravity, but that's we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the impulse from foot to ball or ball to foot. All right, um, number five, also at the bottom here, a force of constant magnitude f and and fixed direction, it's always in the same direction, acts on an object of mass m that is initially at rest. If the force acts over for a time interval, or an interval of delta t, so we've got impulse here, right? Force and time, over a displacement of x, well, that's work. If we do force and displacement is work, what is the magnitude of the resultant change in li the linear momentum of the object? So change in linear momentum is impulse, this, this change, this displacement is not necessary. You have force times time is impulse. It is the change. Um, period. End of story. It doesn't even matter, actually, if the, if the object's initially at rest. The resultant change is going to be that. Let's go see if we are correct. Um, that is number five. And it's A, yes. All right, number seven is the next one. A person applies an impulse of five kilogram meters per second to a box in order to set it in motion. If the person is in contact with the box for that long, what is the average force exerted? It's fairly straight up. If you know that impulse, right, it's capital J or change in momentum, whatever you want to look at it, if you know that impulse is force times time, then this is pretty straightforward. Impulse is 5, the time is 0.25, and they want to know the force. So I just divide and uh, get, let's see, whatever, 5 divided by 25, 0.25 is, that's 5 times 4, it's 20, so it should be 20 newtons is the force, the average force. For number seven, that would be answer D. 
And that is what my answer says correct as well. So check. So far, so good. All right. Another one. So the next one for us is going to be all the way up at 13. There we go. 13. 13 is a tricky one. It's a, it's a good question. We've got a lot going on with this question. We're going to spend some time trying to figure out what this situation is all about. Um, and then we'll figure, worry about the question. Two identical spaceships are traveling in deep, deep space, far from any planets or stars, so no external forces. The ships travel in the same direction, but with the slower one directly behind the faster one. The ships are connected by a cable attached to a spool so that the part of the cable outside of the sh outside the ships can be made longer or shorter as needed. The cable is used to bring the ships to the same uh, up, yeah, to the same speed for a transfer of cargo. The graph above shows the speed of the two ships during a 10 second interval. So this ship is slowing down a little bit. This ship is speeding up. All of the forces in, in here, though, are internal. So the total momentum of the system shouldn't change. So if we look at this here at zero seconds, what's the total momentum of the two. Um, they're identical spaceships, so call each one has a mass of one kilogram, right? It doesn't matter. But if they're identical spaceships, we can make them any mass they want as long as it's the same. So if we do that, the momentum of this one is 7990 initially. And the momentum of this one is 8010. Right. For a sum of total momentum of the system, and they're moving in the same direction, so that's all right, of 7990 plus 8010. So the momentum of the system is 1600, no, 16,000 kilogram meters per second at right here. Now, if all they do is the one ship pulls the other one in using the rope. No other external forces. So like nobody fires their engines or anything like that. If all they do is they're moving along, is they, then their total momentum can't change because that's an internal force. So they ask, does at least one of the ships have its engines turned on during the time interval shown and what evidence indicates so? So what we need to know is we'll pick a later later time something maybe easier to read like eh, maybe here and maybe here and here and let's look at the sum of these two and see if it comes out to be 1600 because the the total momentum should stay the same so let's see this looks to me to be halfway between let's see 8000 um, so this looks to be about seven nine nine seven point five, and this looks to be Eight zero zero seven point five. So adding those two, let's see this plus uh, seven nine nine seven point five. I get 16.005. Hmm. That shows me a little bit of an increase. What about the sum when they get to here? Well, we could do that. That's 80. That's 8.005 plus 8.005. All right. That's 
zero ten. Well, that is more than sixteen hundred, and about halfway it was about half as much. So I would say that the total momentum of the system is gradually increasing. One of them has its its engines on so that there's some added force this way, external force that way. Um, that's that's what you have to look for. Look at in this one when they start talking about. You know, it's one system. You have to add the two momenta. Now, let's see. That's... It's not enough to say because ship two is speeding up. It would speed up either way, because even if they weren't, even if there, nobody was firing their rocker, rockets, ship two would speed up because they were pulling in this thing. And that would make this slow down. So I would expect one to slow down and the other to speed up. That's not an issue. Um, yes, because the momentum of the two rocket system increases. Yeah, that's true. Yes, because an engine is needed to keep the system moving. Oh, that's painful. That's painful. This answer right here. This answer is painful. Yes, because an engine is needed to keep the system moving. Newton's first law? No. Newton's first law is the thing. You don't need a force to keep. Once it's moving, it just it wants to keep moving. Dude, it's an ugly answer. This is an insult to your intelligence. And a blight on your record if you pick it. No, because the cable alone could could alone could be responsible for making ship one slow down. Well, it's not the big deal that the one's gonna speed up and one's gonna slow down, but the sum of their momenta should always be the original, and it's not. So there's something being added in. So I would go with that. 14. Which of the following graphs best represent the net force exerted on the two ship system? Oh, okay, so same problem, just now we have yeah, so the net force. Well, it increases the momentum for those time that time that ten seconds. And it increases it, I think, at a linear rate. And here's why I think that. Um, just in the couple of things I looked at, it was 1,600 here. At 5 seconds, I happened to pick that, it, had, it was 16,005. And then at this, it was 1,610. So I'm thinking that's a constant increase in speed, which would mean a constant acceleration, which would mean a constant force. These aren't constant forces. This is a constant force. This constant force would produce a constant acceleration, which would have a changing velocity. This should be our answer, I think. It's tricky, but it should be our answer. Um, that's 14C. Yep. All right. Sixteen. How does a mattress protect a stunt person landing on the ground after a stunt? So this is all about impulse. This is all about one of my the more important things as far as I'm concerned that you understand out of this unit. And that is that when an actor jumps out of a or out of a window and lands on the ground, whether he lands on concrete or whether he lands on a mattress, his impulse is the same. His change in momentum is the same. Think about it. He's moving, and then he's not. Same change in impulse. But it's how that happens. So the impulse in either case, the change in momentum, in other words, is the same. But if he just lands on the ground, that's pretty hard, so there's not a lot of give. So it's a large force, ouch, over a small amount of time. It does not take him long to stop. No. From the moment his, his face starts hitting the ground to the moment he's stopped, it's not very long. But to stop him that quickly requires a huge force. Ouch. If he uses the mattress or some kind of other cushioning, then the force can be reduced to a more reasonable level, maybe not comfortable, by using a larger amount of time. By the, the mattress has give. It's not going to stop the, act, the actor jumping out of the window as quickly. It's going to extend the time, which reduces the force, because the change in momentum is the same either way. 
So you, this just comparatively, this could be um, 100 times 1, or this could be, I don't know, um, 10 times 10. Right? You reduce the force down to a, a, t a tenth of what it was. That kind of thing. So, let's see. It reduces the kinetic energy loss. It reduces the momentum. No, it does not reduce the momentum change. Either way, no matter what he uses, he has a momentum, he's going to lose it. Um, increases the momentum change. No. Shortens the stopping time. No, the mattress does not shorten the stopping time. It lengthens the stopping time of the stunt person and reduces the force supply. There we go. to our next one looks that way 22 force and time you using a force probe a student generates the graph above of the force exerted on a small wagon as a function of time the wagon starts from rest and rolls with negligible friction on the axles which of the following graphs best represents the wagon's momentum as a function of time interesting okay I'm gonna go with this first so here force versus time in this it picks up a change of momentum that is let's see 1 2 times 10 is 20 cut in half to 10 so they pick up in this first one to two seconds it picks up 10 kilogram meters per second worth of momentum then, in here, he picks up 2 times 10, he picks up 20 kilogram meters per second worth of momentum. Let's see, now this looks like a combination of the two. This is 20 here, plus 10 here. This is 30 kilogram meters per second. So, he picks in the first two seconds, he picks up that. Let's see if we can use that piece of information to help us. So we're looking for graphs that are the momentum and the time. Okay, so we want to know the change in momentum. Well, let's see. Hmm. We certainly started at rest. So we picked up 10, let me get all my answers here, okay, I don't, I don't get this one at all, I, this one doesn't make any sense to me, it, this one says that during this time there's no momentum increase, in fact the momentum goes to zero. And, and there's still a force acting over time, so there's going to be a change in momentum. So that one's definitely gone. All right. I don't see the momentum holding steady here. The force does, basically. But a constant force means a constant acceleration, which changes the velocity. So I would expect an increase here. I would still expect some kind of an increase here. It still should be speeding up. It It's speeding up at a constant rate here. Here, the rate at which it's speeding up is increasing. So, I'm thinking curves. That's why. So, yes, yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking curve, straight line, curve is what I'm thinking. Should be a straight line in here. Should be a curve in here. Because the speed is increasing. If, the, if there is a changing velocity, uh, force, then it means there's a changing acceleration, which means the velocity is increasing not at, not at the same rate. It's a squared. So the momentum is going to be a squared. But if the, if the force is constant, the acceleration is constant, then the velocity is changing pardon me, linearly, so this should be a line, and then a curve. So I would go with D. 
tricky little question. Um, let's see. That is number 22, and it is in fact D. Jack this up by pulling on the page. All right, 23. The graph above shows position versus time. That's an interesting one. It's a function of time. We haven't seen that in a long time. For a center of mass of a system of particles, total mass 6 kilograms. For a very short time interval, around 2 seconds, an external force is exerted on the object in the system on an object in the system. What is the resulting change in momentum of the system? Uh, this is velocity. Change in position over change in time. That's just velocity. So before, the system had a velocity of, let's see, um, 1, 2, and then 4. 8 to 12 is 4. So it's 4 over 2. So it had a, a speed of 2 meters per second. It had a mass of 6 kilograms. So its momentum here was 12 kilogram meters per second. I got that based on the slope of this. Whoops. The slope of this line, which is 4 over 2. This goes from 8 to 12. That's 4. Up and then 2 to the right. So the slope is 2, which is the speed, times the mass, 6 kilograms gives us a momentum here, in this part, of 12 kilogram meters per second. Now, what about afterwards? Well, now we got a momentum of, let's see, this is a change of 2, just a, this is just a speed of 1 meter per second, but negative. All right, it's a negative slope. So it's negative 1 meter per second times 6 kilograms object still. So we're talking about um, negative 6 kilogram meters per second. So what is the change in momentum caused by that external force? Well, careful. The final minus the initial. So it's negative 6 minus positive 12. So it's a drop of 18. It's negative 18. I would go with answer D. 23. Still got it. 24 is going to reference this thing. So let's just draw it over here. So it's a little mass connected by some rod horizontally, and a mass that is, double it, yes, two masses. So it's M, and this is 2M. The system consists of two spheres connected by a rod of negligible mass. So this is very light compared to the size of these. The system is held at its center of mass, wherever that might be, probably closer to here, with the rod horizontal and released from rest near Earth's surface. Um, okay, so let's read this carefully. The rate of change of the linear momentum of the sphere of M, this guy, just this guy. So as time goes on, He picks up 5 kilogram meters per second worth of momentum every second. All right. What is the, and then it says, what is the linear momentum of the two-sphere system at three seconds? Well, let's do this. The, four, the time's three seconds, right? This guy, what force is pulling on this guy? Well, on the single M, the, the force pulling is Mg. Okay, so that's the force times three seconds, and that came up to be, well, let's see. It would be the total, right? Force, it's the rate of change. So, interesting. So, this is five. So I would have that as 15 total. 
every second it's going to pick up five. It's a force times ten. So I'm getting that this is a that relates to yeah. That's a, that's the that's the the weight of our object. So if this thing has an object of a weight of five newtons, this has a weight of ten newtons. And so gravity is going to pull with a total of thirty sorry fifteen newtons for three seconds on the, if you do the whole thing. The linear momentum of the two-sphere system after three seconds is going to be 45 kilogram meters per second. Let's see if I get that right. I did. So let's run through that again, because I don't think that was probably super clear to you. So this is the rate of change of linear momentum. So this and the units are newtons, which is interesting. So this is saying that 5 newton seconds, that's momentum, right, change of momentum, are picked up every second. That's why they say rate of change. But when they do that, really, these cancel. And this is just 5 newtons, which is the weight of the object. Well, then, if this small object, M, has a weight of 5 newtons, this must, since it has double the mass, must have double the weight. It's 10 newtons. And they ask me for the total change in momentum at three seconds. Well, this one and this one, they're picking up that much momentum, newton seconds, every second, but they do it for three seconds. So I got to cancel. I still have this S. So that's 45 newton seconds, which is the new momentum. A newton seconds is the same as a kilogram meters per second. All right, 25. 0 0.05 kilogram tennis ball is moving to the left at 10 meters per second. When it's hit by a tennis racket, that is moving to the right. The magnitude of the force exerted on the ball by the racket is a function of time, isn't shown in the figure, but what is the speed of the ball after the collision with the racket? So we need to find underneath here is the change in momentum, the impulse. And that's what we need to find. So let's take, uh, let's do it this way. This rectangle here would be 500 times 4, but we would cut it in half. So, well, we're doing 500 times 4. That's going to be, I'm just going to be patient, 500 times 4, and divide by 2. Okay, so that's a 1,000 right in here, and that means this triangle is a 1,000 as well. So the total is impulse, change in momentum, is 2,000 joules, not joules, kilograms, kilogram meters per second. Now. The momentum of our ball was this. Yeah. So the momentum of the ball before was 0 0.05 times 10. So it was just a Peasley 0.5 kilogram meters per second. Oh, milliseconds. I knew my numbers were too big. Milliseconds. So this is really not a thousand. Um, it's three. So it's one, two, three. This is really one because this is point. This is two milliseconds. Four milliseconds is one, two, three, point zero, zero, four seconds. So I got to be careful. Let's just make sure I got that right. So 500 times 0 0.004 divided by 2. So yeah, this is 1. I knew that wasn't coming out right. So this is 1. So we got to be careful. Our units here were in milliseconds. So each of these triangles, this one here and the lighter one here, 
each represent a change in momentum of point of one which means a total change in momentum for the whole thing of two because there's two of them. now this makes a little more sense so the initial was 0.5 and we have it moving to the left and the tennis racket is moving to the right magnet on the ball by the racket um I'm assuming then that I'm going to call this a negative, and then I'm going to add on two kilogram meters per second positive worth coming from here, and that's going to be I would I would go with 1.5 kilogram meters per second as being the momentum afterwards, but they want the speed, so that momentum kilogram meters per second um, divided by the mass. should give me the velocity. All right, I got 30 meters per second in that case. A, see if I'm right. 25, yes, A. Okay, even though I almost messed up the milliseconds. 26. 